How do you all you delicious people? I am starting my day off with a six movie ash like review marathon going on. Just because normally I would get very behind on uh, kind of really spamming to get one full day or otherwise try to get a lot of stuff out on one day. So I try to very much uh, push a lot of content out behind the scenes and then ultimately eventually the, it will go out there eventually for people to see. So six movies in three in three videos uh, are all going out today because uh, ultimately I'm doing seemingly two movies bizarrely all tied together. Um, so anyways, we're kind of doing new territory in here to ultimately... I'm trying to do much more cleaner reviews of a lot of movies because otherwise uh, I don't realistically know anymore where the line is drawn between YouTube. Uh, because ultimately you can probably feel that, hey, I can talk about a movie and talk about anything that goes on into a movie. But then when ultimately looking at it, YouTube will think that like well yeah this person is describing this movie but what it, it also seems like he's describing is this so recently yeah just kind of doing a, a movie review at a much more cleaner way so anyways luckily for me let's go into talking about two films we're ultimately here to talk about john carpenter's they live and then we are also here to talk about The Survivalist. The Survivalist, I had enjoyed watching once before, so, so ultimately I had rewatched it, and now I am re-reviewing it. Ultimately, because the original way that I had re reviewed this at some point no longer exists because it can't, because YouTube won't accept it uh, as a review. <laughs> Because ultimately it has, like, there's some certain kind of theme going on that ultimately, yeah. John Carpenter's They Live. Reasonably, this is the very first time that I've ever really sat down and watched They Live. I've seen kind of s scenes here and there, but I never really collectively watched the entire thing until now. Which, honestly, to me, I, like, came off and I was like, you know what, I actually pretty much really enjoy this movie like there's something about it that was just kind of really like fun to me like how basically we end up having it to to be where it just like everything seems quite normal until eventually you get to the aspect of somebody throwing on a pair of sunglasses simple enough so yeah, let's go into talking where you can watch these films. Ultimately, The Survivalist to me is just a movie that ultimately I just thoroughly enjoyed. So I couldn't easily figure out an exact way for you to see this movie. You could probably rent it on an Amazon or a Sling or a, or a, or a Voodoo of sorts. Uh, some kind of app service so you can probably rent a movie. Or otherwise, I would just say bootleg it. Find some movie pro-like app that you can probably watch this for the first time and probably enjoy it. Even though a lot of people could ultimately say it's slow or people don't understand what's going on or this and that. It's kind of a... It's kind of like a futuristic movie where everybody eventually uh, kind of collectively ties themselves onto a uh, a life of which to just survive off the bare essentials. So let's ultimately let you know that you can go on Amazon and watch this movie via the app Stars. By and large, yeah, um, more than likely, if you already are not a member of stars you can go ahead and say that you saw this movie by going into stars and and watching it uh for an i'm assuming a free trial probably maybe a week or something like that anyways 
because uh, I'd seen it through other means. I just kind of go through bootlegged like sites and ultimately watch things for absolutely free, which is great for me. But ultimately, yeah, um, I'm just kind of recommending where people can see this elsewhere if ultimately they uh, don't want to like they want to like go through a legitimate source to ultimately see a movie, which that is completely fine. Um, I go through other means like going through like movie pros and movie boxes and, and bizarre apps that dare in fact be like, Oh, Hey, I can see this movie now through this means. So let's go into first talking about the movie they live. So well, I'm going to talk about both of these movies in a cryptic like sense and eventually dust out that double five and then go into spoilers about this movie. So this movie was actually, like, it was very much more complicated than I thought it would be. Because I was just like, man, like, is it just going to be, like, one day that they, like, bizarrely, like, sunglasses could easily just now, like, see, <laughs> see an alien race? And no, like... It seems that this movie is a much more complicated film, as if they really took the time to double back over just certain set pieces and change things to make them look different. And I thought that, that was kind of interesting. Here is the thing that I, I probably have an issue with this movie, is... Just the fact that it kind of is fairly slow going, I think there probably is too much emphasis on needing to show us the difference between our world and the alien world. I, or, well, the our world and alien world are the same thing, but, like, you'll understand what I'm saying or what I mean by watching this film. Basically, it's... Shades of Grey, let's just say. Because um, basically it's the same planet, but it is ultimately Shades of Grey. Going through wearing a pair of sunglasses, uh, or a very specific pair of sunglasses, and realizing that the world isn't what it seems. So, going into this movie... I was overall just kind of like, okay, slow momentum, but, like, there is some interesting payouts. This movie, to me, kind of feels like there's there's quite a bit of good of it. There's quite a bit of good into it. Like, it just kind of... I wish that this movie probably would have had, like much more sequels or this thing would have been like an actual series just kind of give a give us like a show of this i think it would have been better off as a show than eventually kind of like where where we eventually have to forcibly just taper off at the very end of this when going into this movie you you really have to eventually see how in-depth the alien race is within this uh, already existing planet Earth and see how basically they are basically these people that have easily taken over and have easily just, like, capitalized on otherwise being really just overpowering characters right away, which I thought was really bizarre. I'm like, okay, have they always been on Earth? It, or had they just gotten here? I guess it doesn't matter, because eventually, like, an alien race just has to be ingrained in, in, in Earth's approach. So, yeah, um... But yeah, but it's kind of interesting to to see a movie that it's kind of like, well, hey, like, wouldn't it be interesting one day to just, like, see that there were, like, aliens among us and we wouldn't know until it's too late or until basically 
we have to be shown that it's too late. So that's the thing I like about this. Reasonably, I think a lot about this movie is kind of drawn out. Like, I mean, long and drawn out, like, like a whole entire fight scene between two people, like takes like, like, okay, like, like I'm like in the back and forth, like punching, kicking, punching, but I'm like, man, this fight out is really extensive. And then like the whole, like, uh, like seeing everything through a different pair of eyes, like that is very extensive. Uh, but it also is like, man, how much work did like that was that's a lot of work that a lot of people had to put into. And I appreciated the movie for that. It's like they really did two different sides of a coin and had to put so much work into into this movie to showcase two different sides of a of the same planet. So I enjoyed this movie for that. I thought that it was really overall like something that you could build onto. Like you could make a, a TV series out of it, or ultimately you can very much build to having a, a sequel, which I don't think they did. Uh, if they did, then that would have been great. But yeah, John Carpenter's They Live was an interesting movie. I liked it for what it was, and but I'm just like, man, like why, why not do something with this? It feels like a property. Like every single John Carpenter thing that eventually he did, like Halloween's and and uh, and basically everything up until maybe like Ghost of Mars. Maybe that's a little reaching to say. Yeah, have uh a thing of Ghost of Mars, because that seems kind of like a random movie, but most of John Carpenter's, like, stuff usually goes really well and does really well, and so ultimately, I'm kind of confused why they didn't remake this or try something new or do something different. Uh, make it be a political thing. Like, I think a lot of people are thinking, like, a, like a president ultimately being an alien. You never know. But anyways... I wish that they would honestly remake this movie uh, just because ultimately I would like for there to be seemingly a longer stretch of them like in desperation to ultimately get through the paces of figuring this whole thing out. I really like how Roddy Piper in this movie is beating the living crap out of people clotheslining and freaking uh, Norman Light suplexing people and, and T-Bone suplexing people and all kinds of stuff. Uh, basically, like, a lot of this stuff, we can easily tell that, like, Roddy Piper is actually doing wrestling moves in this movie. It's not, like, yeah, you can kind of see, like, every wrestler kind of has to do wrestling moves in a movie. It's weird. Like, at first, like, a lot of their early movies, yeah, they kind of have to do a bunch of wrestling moves. Like, I think The Rock had had to forcefully do The Rock Bottom. I think, like, John Cena had to do, like, suplexes and stuff to people. And it was weird. <laughs> I'm like, this makes no sense. Like, John Cena should just grab a man and chuck him out a window. It shouldn't be, like, he has to physically suplex somebody off of something this doesn't really quite make any sense. But I think recently, I think a lot of fans of, of Cena's or were probably the his co-stars. So they were probably desperately like, oh, man, could you please just suplex me through? The... <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, I, I'm living the dream here of being a, a pro, pro wrestler for five seconds. Uh, so, hey, man, if you want to just uh, uh, give me a rock bottom or give me a, an elbow or. Give me something. So, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fun. If you've never seen They Live, John Carpenter's They Live, because I want to make that uh, prominent, because ultimately, I guess there was another They Live. I'm sure it might have been a black and white version or something like that. 
Uh, I'm not a movie specialist, so I just know that this movie exists. And ultimately, I know full well that at some point, uh, the Saints Row video game, Saints Row the 4th, or Saints Row 4, I've played the game, but heaven forbid I remember what the title is. Saints Row 4, uh, I know uh, some DLCs of it was re-elected and stuff like I've played the game, I have. Um, but yeah, we had uh, a kind of a, a They Live kind of reunion between Roddy Piper and ultimately uh, Keith David that plays Frank in this movie. Um, so yeah, if you love They Live, realize that there is an entire game series that eventually covers uh, They Live, if you do not know. So, funny enough, you would think that once I played Saints Row 4 and I played it numerous times, I would, I would watch They Live. But, <laughs> kind of doing it ass backwards, but it is what it is. So, yeah. So, you can kind of tell that I really enjoyed this movie. I had fun watching it. If you've never seen this movie in your life, get a copy of it. Find it somewhere. Ultimately, rent it somehow. Because it's an enjoyable film. And... I thought it was just kind of like it like kind of the ending of it like doesn't really have like a like a big huge payout and ultimately like the escalation of where this movie goes like doesn't seem big enough to me but I just take it as just like you know what like maybe they were thinking about sequels. <laughs> Maybe they were just thinking about, like, man, this movie was probably done really cheaply, so maybe they'll want maybe they'll want another one. Maybe people will love it. Uh, I can't help but think uh, of the line that Roddy Piper says in this movie, where he's basically like, yeah, like, I came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. And, like, funny enough, like, that scene, like, right after that becomes, like, a very... Like, very hard-hitting, uh, fun scene that I actually enjoyed via this film. So, let's go into spoilers about this movie. I'm going to try as much as possible to kind of quickly pace this review. Because ultimately realizing I have other reviews to do. But then also, like, I don't want to dawdle too much and take two hours to re review two movies. I just don't. I just don't anymore. I don't want to take two hours to review one film or two films or whatever. So let's go into They Live and let's go into the spoiler variation of this movie. So let's go into that double five time count. At the end of the day, I'm going to say that I loved this movie. I don't think there is anything that is undeniably like... I wouldn't overall recommend anybody not going out of the way to see this movie because it's honestly just like for anybody, it's, it's not a horror film. It's not a movie that's going to scare you. And so for kind of anyone, this is kind of like, if you've never very much went into going into any kind of like real, uh, kind of sci-fi or something like that, this could be like easily like a, a bridge gap for a lot of people to ultimately kind of go into a uh, kind of a movie that's uh, fairly interesting and a thing that I enjoyed. So, spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time going to spoil this movie. So, spoilers now. So, we have to where we ultimately have Roddy Piper, who is ultimately named George. We ultimately have Keith David, who is ultimately named Frank. So we have to where George, ultimately Roddy Piper, George ultimately is a hobo-ish like character that ultimately is kind of uh, just hoboing himself, kind of just uh, has a sleeping bag and like basically he's on he's in the streets just kind of um sacking from place to place ultimately desperately when he eventually gets a job doing construction uh ultimately working with keith david which is frank we have it to where ultimately like 
George is desperate to ultimately see it's like, hey, uh, when is the next time we get paid? And so, of course, the uh, like his boss tells him Thursday. So, of course, George is desperately looking to just be like, God, I, I just need money just to kind of like actually fully fledgedly like have a place to sleep. And so we have it to where ultimately Frank, Keith David, I'm probably just going to call the actors by their actors' names because more than likely people are like, who is this? Who is George? Who is Frank? So Keith David goes over to Roddy Piper's character and ultimately mentions like, hey, like, if anything, there's a place over like down the street uh, that ultimately like is willing to to give you uh to give you shelter and stuff like that so and that's basically where both of these guys have like spent the funny thing is like it's shelter but i would very much call it like like there's not much of a difference from where roddy was to where he ends up in this movie if anything like it's much more of like a campgrounds esh like place realistically so there's not like a huge difference between the like him just bumming it off the street or him just kind of really just bumming it off to the side of some seemingly campgrounds but it's something it's got to be something so we have it to where roddy uh, ultimately doesn't go with keith david at first but then bizarrely uh piper keeps following keith david <laughs> and i thought that this is like a really funny moment where you have it to where keith david is ultimately like looking over his shoulder just like consistently seeing piper follow him along <laughs> and then so eventually keith david stops piper and he's like hey man like i don't like people following me and ultimately piper goes with it's like well like hey like i don't like <laughs> like i i want to know where a man's going before like i uh i get there kind of thing like like he's like piper is wanting to trust keith david but like he's having him on a very light leash to where, like there's only one way for piper to really go but ultimately he's just like yeah but i want to kind of like i want to see how things are at first like i'm not quite all that trusting so ultimately uh keith and ronnie both make it to this like campgrounds ish like place and it seems very copacetic and so Roddy and, and Frank are just kind of in this environment. We ultimately have it to where there is a church nearby that seems to be justifiably giving people uh, like soup and food and stuff like that and volunteering. We ultimately find it to where ultimately uh, it seems that uh, by this environment, one of these people have like a TV uh, that kind of eventually bizarrely chimes in with this uh, inter like interfering like broadcast telling people the truth about what's all going on and that ultimately there is like someone among them and and this and that they might seem like us but like and so ultimately we have to where Roddy within this environment is starting to question people. And so ultimately, he is starting to question the people that are at this church, ultimately asking like, hey, like, what exactly is this church doing? Like, there's something suspicious about this. It seems like there's something suspicious about this guy that is otherwise offering this food. I want to give him some questions here and there. But we ultimately find out that Roddy goes into the church and realizes that the church is actually a facade that realistically all of these people are bunkering down at this church and supposedly is having choir music being 
uh, presented as some smokescreen to say, oh yeah, this is a real legitimate church. It's people singing. So, but what's really going on is people are planning. People are planning and having some some attack to ultimately say, hey, yeah, these, um, like, ultimately we've tried very much to desperately uh, get money for this uh, to fund uh, to fund our attack because we know better. But it seems like the... It seems like the people that are trying to fight these this alien-ish people, the people among them, it seems like they run them out of their house and home to the point to where they have no funds or means to be able to figure out how to be able to really figure out exactly how to come at going, okay, I know what's going on, but... Like, how am I going to get people around me, people to protect me, and otherwise go against these aliens? So, we have it to where ultimately, at, in the middle of the night, we have a seemingly... Like bulldozers and SWAT, or like I would call them more like street riot ish, like uh, cops in gear, cleaning out this entire section of homeless people. Reasonably, because I think that uh, the police force and or people know that these men are the only people that are resisting against them and so reasonably we have all of these cops and all of these uh, construction workers and stuff like that basically just beating people to death it makes no sense it's like what is going on like what were they doing wrong and it's just no like i think the uh the this alien race is trying to push the real humans into a place to where ultimately it is like to just beating them to the ground and then killing them squashing on them like bugs so we have everybody randomly scatter to the point where eventually like roddy is like desperately trying to like bunker into this home and people are saying it's like man has world war three started it's like evidently so we have it to where roddy ends up going into this church like back in this church to just kind of look around and bizarrely ending up smashing his way through this wall to ultimately like see these uh these boxes so ultimately, he notices a box full of sunglasses. He's like, what the heck is this? So ultimately, Piper throws on some shades and starts walking about town. All of a sudden, the entire town looks drastically different than what he's normally seeing. Normally, you would see like a, a wall that has like a beer commercial instead it's a billboard that says the word obey. Uh, <laughs> we consistently have all these kinds of weird esh like slogans that are slapped on everything. Uh, like sleep at 8 p.m. Or, or work every day. Or some of these like really bizarre esh like sayings like consume and... And this and that. It's just a lot of weird, bizarreish like jargon through everything. Even buildings are renamed uh, to have guises for otherwise the alien race to understand where to go into and what. Uh, like, it seems like they have their own language. And it is just very bizarre. It gets to the point where Roddy is 
looking through a magazine and every single one of the pages, even the cover of the magazine, is all whited out. And every single thing basically just has the same nonsense just printed over and over and over again. Like, obey, consume, uh, work every day, sleep at 8 p.m. or whatever, or uh, work eight hours, and this and that. And it's like, what is all this stuff? What is, what is all going on? This is all crazy. So we have it to where at some point that Roddy Piper starts calling out these people. He starts just like calling them out and tell them like, man, you have one ugly mug. <laughs> He starts calling him out because ultimately he he starts to go through the town and ultimately the very first alien he sees is at the newspaper stand and and ultimately the guy is like, hey, like you have any problems, sir? And ultimately Ronnie uh walks away, eventually going to a grocery store, seeing more aliens um next to, to humans and this and that. So Eventually, Piper eventually calls out one of the women in the grocery store and tells her, it's like, man, you got, you were some, some kind of ugly. <laughs> it's like, man, like I'm, I'm seeing these things and I can't believe it. And so that's when you start to see the, the aliens start to freak out. And then all of a sudden their watches are like. They're calling out, it's like, uh, it seems like we got a looker here. It seems like we have someone who, who can see. And so immediately we all of a sudden bizarrely have a ton of aliens all like collected together. And they're on their uh, watches, which are like walkies. And so they're like walking down this aisle and Ronnie's just like, what is going on? To where eventually he gets out of the grocery store, ends up getting stopped by the police, but the police is again aliens. And so, reasonably, it gets to the point to where ultimately Roddy is confronted by these policemen and he is just beating the crap out of them, just clotheslining them, suplexing them, all kinds of other stuff. And then taking their guns and then ultimately running. Uh, running to eventually just rob a bank uh, or what would seem to be robbing a bank because all he really goes into the bank to do is just shoot and kill down any one of these aliens that he thinks that he sees. So... While also saying, like, hey, I came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, but I'm all out of bubblegum. So, because reasonably everybody is assuming that he's here to rob the place, but he doesn't steal anything. He just ultimately goes and basically just ends up killing a bunch of aliens. So, it seems that Roddy is on the run uh, and ultimately, it seems that there is a bulletin out showcasing uh, what Roddy looks like, which probably might have been an old photo because ultimately, a lot shorter hair. So anyways, we have Roddy who eventually goes into work the next day to try to convince Frank that's like, hey, I need to show you something. So... Frank is like, I don't want to know nothing. I don't want you to show me anything. I know I got a, I got a kid. I got a wife. Like, no, no, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to know anything. I don't want to, I don't want you to see, I don't show me anything. No. Cause ultimately like he had heard on the news what he had done. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to. Like, because ultimately when looking at Roddy's face and looking at how, like, beaten up it is and whatever, like, Frank is just like, I don't want any of that. No. 
I have a family. I have a job. So it ends up being that George and Frank end up having this fight out for sunglasses, which I think is just hilarious. But no, it's important. Bizarrely, like, I just don't get it how, like, Frank has to admittedly just not want to put on these sunglasses so badly. So we have to where it's this long, drawn-out fight where ultimately, like, there's nut shots, and ultimately, like, Frank is like, you mother... And, and so they fight it out brutally, viciously, repetitively, to the point of it just, like, all of these suplexes and 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 hits the face and this and that going on and on and on to the point to where eventually, of course, relevantly, George keeps throwing on the sunglasses on Frank and he keeps flinging them off, ultimately telling him he's like, he's not going to do what, what uh, ultimately George wants. So, Inevitably, Roddy quasi kicks Frank's butt because it kind of seems very even. They're bar they're barely kind of hanging on by life, and so Roddy ends up throwing the shades on Keith David, and then Keith David ends up going, "Oh, hey, wow, there really is something different about this world," and so. We have Keith David that is basically like living and breathing with these sunglasses on. And so also is Roddy. Because reasonably, um, here's a scene that I forgot about. There was at some point where, and it'll come back around to, to get to us. So ultimately after Roddy ends up trying to rob the bank, ultimately he ends up Basically kidnapping a woman and having her take him to her home. And then ultimately he ultimately is trying to convince her to put on these sunglasses and see the new world for what it is as well. And reasonably, like, this woman is just like, you know what, I'll do whatever you want, but like... Like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, and to where eventually she ends up throwing him, like, out of her, out of her window. And he, like, starts rolling down this hill. And that's to where eventually he just ends up with Frank the very next day at, at the construction site, forcing him to put on the sunglasses. So... We end up having it to where Frank and George are ultimately just like, well, hey, like, what do we do now? Like, now that we know that, like, our world is an entire sham, what is the next thing we got to do? It's like, well, Piper is obviously thinking, it's like, well, we need to escalate this. We need to get people together. We need to... Like we need to, we need to get weapons together. We need to fight this and this and that. So eventually, it comes down to us having Gilbert, Gilbert, who was the guy that ultimately was uh, kind of at the church giving people uh, food, and then ultimately coming up with some people trying to figure out what they're gonna do in this church ultimately reconnects himself with Roddy and with Frank uh, or with Keith David and ultimately like tells him, hey, like it looks like you guys have sunglasses on. So do I. And so recently it's like, well, hey, like uh, I have a like I have a an entire group uh, group together that um, like we're going to fight against this thing. So. We have to where ultimately Keith, David, and Piper end up going to this group soiree. And we find out, bizarrely, that they have upgraded from sunglasses to now contact lenses. 
But I don't think they actually had contact lenses to put in the guy's eyes because you can kind of see bizarrely them trying to like cover up uh, them trying to put uh, contact lenses into their eyes by basically having the 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 contact solution ash like things like shoved in their faces or like I don't know it looked very bizarre and or maybe that's just the way they put in contact lenses but it was just an easy way to not have them wear sunglasses through the entire movie and so they can easily see everybody anyways so we ultimately have this collective together and eventually we have uh kind of people going up making speeches letting people know what is the next thing to go on uh and ultimately, they are kind of desperately looking for people to not only fund this thing, but also tell people it's like, well, hey, like, don't just all of a sudden just walk away from your jobs, like go into your jobs, punch in, do your work. Like, if anything, like we need to make uh, everything look normal. If something looks uh, too suspicious, then maybe they'll start hunting you or coming after you. So make sure you stay at your jobs. But yeah, uh, we're going to go after this thing. We're going to fight this thing, this and that. So eventually we find out that that same girl that had thrown Piper out her window to assume that he was to die. Ultimately, her name is Holly. We find out that she is at this place and she is ultimately on the side of Piper and... It seems that she has come to that same conclusion of just like, well, yeah, like, I guess what Piper was saying had some truth to it. So I came here to otherwise realize that, uh, yeah, somebody was telling me the truth. So ultimately, it seems very good that it seems that Piper is going to have like some relationship with this girl. I'm like, OK, cool. Uh, I had seen uh, God that. There was this one Roddy Piper movie that was very odd uh, called... It was something from Frogtown, like a man from Frogtown. I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, I would probably just uh, say what the actual title was. But uh, there was another Roddy Piper movie that was bizarre. And it was kind of like a, a post-apocalyptic like movie where like Roddy Piper was the last living man to give women uh babies and man was that an odd film i think it was called like a, a man from frogtown or something like that but it, it had the word frogtown in the in the title ultimately you can probably imdb roddy piper i'm sure there's very few movies i don't know every time i go into it there's quite a bit more roddy piper movies to his uh to his rolodex of things that he's done but anyways yeah, mood point. But anyways, we have to where ultimately someone finds out about this club and then ultimately everyone crazily scatters. So we have to where ultimately Roddy and Keith David ultimately find this little seemingly like manhole cover that ultimately goes into where the... Like, it kind of is like a portal, like, literally, like, the video game portal, where it seems like somebody, like, made a hole into the ground to ultimately uh, go from the, just some, some uh, city somewhere to hole into what is the portal to the alien home base so we end up having it to where both roddy and keith david are just kind of going through going through this entire just alien home base as if like they're new recruits of this now and basically people stopping them are immediately just saying Oh, wow, it's great that you were both recruited. The only problem is it didn't really seem like you, like, dressed for the occasion. And then, like, well, yeah, we're, like, oh, well, we're just kind of really new to this. So, 
ultimately these guys are just kind of walking through this alien base like it's nobody's business and nobody's really just kind of like stopping them or kind of confirming much they're just like hey yeah like whatever you want to do basically there is some like drifter that ultimately is like guiding them through this entire place and to where eventually that leads them up to them finding the within this like uh, this base ash like operations that there is the the news and so we have to where ultimately we are finding out that even the news people are alien as well of course we showed that off earlier in the film when piper's in the grocery store so we have it to where ultimately piper and keith david have to come clean to this drifter that ultimately they are on like the human race human race's side because they pull a gun on him and ultimately they're like dude how could you turn on like how could you turn on uh, like our country how could you turn on him because ultimately this guy is actually a human but he chose to be with the aliens. Like, he chose to just be like, you know what? Like, yeah, I want to, <laughs> like, like I, I'm okay with being a uh, an alien supporter. Uh, because, man, like, the, the checks are really good. Because uh, ultimately this guy is, like, living and, and, and breathing in a tuxedo. And it's like, man, going from a drifter to, to nobody to now being, like, Daddy Warbucks. Man, this is pretty good. Because ultimately, this guy, this drifter, is trying to talk to these guys into being a part of this uh, collective. Because he's like, man, how can you throw away all that money that they're going to give you? How can you throw away all these opportunities that you wouldn't get if you weren't with this collective? Come on, man. Like, it's very lucrative. And ultimately, we have to where, like, Roddy Piper and... And Keith David are just like, no, man, no. So we have it to where Keith David and, and ultimately Roddy Piper are firing their way through this building to ultimately get to the very top of the building to break this satellite. Because they know if they break this satellite, the satellite is ultimately sending a signal seemingly to all people of Earth that that ultimately can see that ultimately cannot see a alien now once his satellite breaks they're going to be able to see what an alien looks like without without uh having sun uh, sunglasses on or contact lenses or anything like that basically this satellite is bizarrely a key that ultimately gives uh gives alien the alien race some kind of cloaking mechanism and so now once once because because here's bizarrely the thing this alien race from what the movie says is from another dimension which i don't quite understand why they came from came from a dimension to come to here supposedly that is kind of the backstory of these characters that supposedly they had come from another dimension but I just don't quite understand. Maybe there's some portion of this that, like, I don't think I got enough backstory of this uh, seemingly dimensional race. So maybe I'm saying aliens, but when I should really be saying is dimensional, otherworldly people. I don't know. Uh, take that if what you will to understand this movie a little bit more. So yeah. It ends up that. Uh, Roddy Piper, Keith David, shooting their way through a bunch of these swat esh like guys. Ultimately, Roddy Piper is trying to figure out where the, where the satellite is. There's some woman that tells him where the satellite is. He makes his way up there. So, reasonably, seemingly, every single person that seems to make their way up to this satellite is seemingly going up there to 
if so facto, maybe make it out alive. Because <laughs> reasonably, like, while we're really getting to the satellite, we are starting to lose people to the point to where, like, basically we have it to where Holly and George are the only two that are up there that are seemingly alive at this point, sadly enough. So, we have it to where ultimately, like, George is looking at Holly and he's like, like, yeah, I'm so glad that you're here and, like, yeah, we can take this down. And Holly had turned on George and is on the side of the aliens. And so, ultimately, she's pointing a gun at Roddy Piper and... Like, it basically ends up to be a shootout to where ultimately Piper takes out, of the, takes out the satellite, but Holly takes him out. So, reasonably, it ends up that Roddy ends up breaking the satellite to where everybody can see the, this alien race now. And so, reasonably... Piper is just there to just die at the end of all of this, which is kind of just sad. I'm like, well, I knew we weren't going to have a happy ending because there's only so small of people that are really rebelling and really getting to this satellite. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the ending. And ultimately, there's some stuff that I kind of kind of quickly went through the last details of like how exactly did Keith David die how exactly did Roddy die I, I just kind of skipped I just kind of skipped a lot of things so at the end of the day let's move on to the survivalist so the survivalist is probably going to be very much more easier to review because this movie is very much a fairly slow film a slow film but when also looking at it, there are portions of this movie which I cannot actually mention without me just saying the words adult content. Because ultimately, there is at point in times some portions of this movie where two people are, let's just say, sharing within one another. And that's all I'm going to go into that approach. So... Going into this movie, let's talk about the survivalist, a very cryptic-like sense. So, reasonably, this is a movie that we would have to suggest is a world where the world had gone completely and utterly awry. Everyone is desperately clinging on to any little small resource that they have. It seems that everybody is gone into the Stone Age, seemingly, of resources reasonably it's just like hey if you have a if you have a really warm fire or you bizarrely have figured out how to farm then good on you um because you're gonna live in whatever this new world is so going along into this movie we ultimately have we ultimately have people that don't even have names the survivalist, the ultimately main character, doesn't have an actual character name. His name is just Survivalist. Funny enough. Uh, but it doesn't really seem like much of the actual character names in this movie really matter. Uh, if anything, they're barely even said that all that much. Um, and recently, uh, we have it to where it be to where it is like the survivalist love interest is uh Meloja Meloa Milo <laughs> and then the older older woman that is with him is Catherine uh anyways yeah more than likely uh yeah Barely few times that actual names are said in this movie. So reasonably, uh, yeah, reasonably I had to even look up the names of these characters to try to decipher 
like, okay, how am I going to review this movie and how I'm going to make sure to let you know who these people are? Um, but yeah, Meloja is spelled M I L J A. Milja? Miloja? Meloja? Malaja? 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 Malaja. That's what I'll probably go with for the rest of this view, calling her Malaja, even though it's probably something completely, utterly different. Uh, but anyways, you can probably check out the movie and check the name out for yourself, because I'm going to probably butcher the crap out of it. Because even when the movie was set in it, I'm like, what is her, what was her name? I don't remember. So... Going to this movie, you have it to where I'm going to kind of tee people up. Uh, it's going to be quasi kind of like teeing people up to let everybody know like what happens in this film. So we kind of just have a guy that ends up, for the most point of this movie, kind of just stuck in his cabin and then two people eventually come along. And so now within this new world... We have this guy the entire time has his hand on the trigger because ultimately he doesn't trust these two new people. But then again, it gets to the point to where ultimately like the world's a very untrusting place. And so ultimately it seems like these strangers eventually tie themselves on to one another and yeah I thought this movie was kind of it was really interesting to eventually have it to where people are very much mistrusting in this movie or very much trying to pull off these kind of little scenarios that ultimately will probably blow up in their faces later on and then there is a very like oh my god portions of these movies where where it's like dude you did this kind of thing at the wrong time you stupid you stupid person you why did you take this person's stuff then cuz that is the worst time to take his stuff you stupid person like, there are so many times in this movie where I was just like, oh, yeah, it had to be that one time that they do this or they try to plan ahead and ultimately think that, like, okay, they're finally going to, to get one up on this guy and it ends up blowing up in their faces, literally. And, but then eventually they realize it's like, you know what? Like, this guy is actually for the most point, a good guy because he could have just uh, booted us out at any point in time and he didn't. Uh, he, it seemed like he uh, even know full well that he probably could have booted them out at some point because realistically, it's like, like, you you done me wrong. I'm going to, you're donezo. But ultimately, he just, he kept on with these people and yeah so it's very interesting to see the way of which that this guy ultimately forcibly has to farm uh with very limited resources to the point to where he even has to uh even has to just kind of uh kind of pee into the wind uh to ultimately get his plants watered at some point so I thought that that was kind of an interesting approach to this movie to just kind of go, yeah, like resources are so low that basically it's like, well, hey, I have to desperately like make as many uh, plants and whatever is humanly possible. So this is the means of which I have to go about this now. So, yeah, interesting movie. I I really liked it. Uh, I know not everybody will. I think a lot of people won't understand the movie or a lot of people will say that there's like not enough going on here to want to go out of your way to find this movie. And that is an okay point. I can understand that. And, but I just enjoyed this movie. And so I went out of my way to re-review this film and talk about it. So 
let's go into spoilers about this movie because at the end of the day, there's not a lot going on. So it's probably a much probably uh i would say that this is probably a brief review i would think of of spoilers and stuff like that so we ultimately have to do a double five time count and i'm not gonna go right into spoilers so at the end of the day check this movie out i thought that it was worth a watch but not everybody will feel so ultimately a lot of people are like you want me to watch this movie mm, i think that was stupid uh, but I don't know. Uh, I've probably also watched a lot of stupid films in my day. <laughs> and ultimately, a lot of people will hate and just dislike some of the stuff that I just bizarrely just f found to be the opposite. Uh, just because reasonably I can't watch a normal film anymore. I can't just watch any kind of like mainstreamed esh like movie that has to have this like... Like, I have to go and watch Avatar kind of movies, like, all kinds of movies that everybody, like, forcibly everyone loves. Like, no, I want to find these much more, like, um, Island of Misfit Toys-ish, like, movies and ultimately try to, like, get them to be um, something that a broader audience at some point will enjoy. So, spoiler time, spoiler time, it's about the time again to spoil this movie. So, we have it to where ultimately, our main character, the survivalist, the man with no name, ultimately is dragging around a body. He's just dragging. He's just doing, Wah! he's ultimately giving us a little Godzilla. No. Um, this man is dragging around a body because ultimately we find out that this guy's body is his brother. And so ultimately... We have it to where seemingly the survivalist is tossing this body out to eventually just to be eaten away by maggots and this and that. So we end up having this main character. I'll just call him Martin because his actual real actor's name is Martin. So I'll just call him that for the rest of the movie. That's pretty easy. So Martin ends up going into... Uh, ends up going into uh, plant life and eventually ends up uh, kind of having to relieve himself into a pot to ultimately get his plants uh, some nourishment because heaven forbid if you have it rain a lot. So this guy is putting crops together and eventually uh, one time of one day we have it to ultimately... Somebody comes, uh, let's just say, metaphorically knocking at his door. And so ultimately he opens said door and it seems that there is there are two women that ultimately would like to bargain with him. And ultimately this guy has his shotgun out because he ultimately doesn't trust anybody. Ultimately it seems that this old lady, um, Catherine, and... Uh, I'll just call her uh, Millie for the for the rest of this. Millie, Millie, yeah, sure, Millie, sure. So, ultimately, these two women ultimately are offering the Martin. At first, they are going to offer him like some kind of jewelry to justify their stay there, but. Martin wants nothing with that because he can't do anything with that. There's like, it's like, no, there's nothing. <laughs> like, I don't care about jewelry. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to bargain with, I don't bargain with anybody. It's just farm, uh, farming that I do. So we have to where it seems like both of these women are just like, well, Hey, like, uh, it seems like you have a pretty good farm here. If anything, we have some, uh, some stuff with us that might help you, and like, hey, uh, we're off we're offering to be, uh, extra hands to be able to help you on your farm. Uh, ultimately, our survivalist doesn't really say much, uh, very much until somebody really asks him things, or ultimately he like. There's very small amount of lines going through most of this movie, to be brutally honest. So, 
a lot of quiet figuring things out or just kind of like every once in a while, like somebody pops in to ask the survivalist a question and ultimately he doesn't really have a very long winded answer. So ultimately the ultimately we have it to Martin is looking at the stuff that they have. And it seems like that could be just good enough to otherwise justify them staying for seemingly a short period of time. But the more uh, we have Catherine, the much older woman, ultimately just kind of like going, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe we could have this guy really want to have us stay here by offering up my daughter to him and meaning offering in a very much uh, bedroom business way, cryptically saying that. So reasonably, it ends up that the girl ends up giving herself to this man. And ultimately, Catherine is just like, well, hey, like, do you really like my, like, do you really like my, uh, my girl? Like, do you really, like, do you want to keep seeing her? Do you want to keep, uh, like, do you want to, like, keep, like, she, like, she's basically bargaining her, her blood to this man. <laughs> and reasonably what is, en what is ending up happening is these two women are trying to figure out how to kill this man to basically keep what they kill, to ultimately keep his farm. The entire time they are thinking like, well, hey, like how about we make him food and then poison it? Or hey, how about we, uh, how about we end up like taking his shotgun shells when he's not looking or when he's sleeping and he won't realize it. And then eventually when he uh, goes to pull out his gun, he won't have his shotgun shells. And then so ultimately we can go and attack him and and kill him at some point. There is also one point in the movie where the younger girl ends up going to Martin's character and ends up shaving him. Ultimately... To the point of tour, of course, like if she's going to be consistently in a romantic, a romantic relationship with this man, um, because it doesn't really seem like that at first until there's a big event that happens to really just go, OK, maybe there's something much more there with this with this guy. So reasonably, she ends up shaving him and the entire time she is doing that. He is holding a shotgun to her head. And so she is shaving him. And like, this is really interesting because she's tr like coming up with like the most homemade-ish like way to, to, of course, shave this, uh, shave this man. So reasonably we see Martin much more of a clean shaven and kind of much more streamlined ash like character in this and that. So we ultimately have it to where they are kind of working on the, the farm one day and we ultimately have it to where um, to where um, Mila ultimately goes out to uh, let's just say clean her undergarments and all the while cleaning her undergarments she ends up finding some random man with some kind of german ash like pistol or something like that and so he ultimately grabs her and is ultimately trying like trying to i think try to figure out where she's coming from or ultimately try to just think that at some point he's gonna have to kill a bunch of folks and so ultimately like we have to martin is like, you know, where is Millie? Millie, uh, Millie, or... Malaysia. <laughs> like, she's been gone for a while. So, 
ultimately you have Catherine and Martin both out in the forest, just kind of like crazily looking for her. And so I'm probably going to call uh, Malaysia Mia because that's the actual actress's name. Uh, the actual actress's name is Mia. I think at some point, probably at some point in the movie, I think Catherine actually calls the girl Mia in the movie, but I think that wasn't, that was actually a mistake. So maybe they like had to like adjust it in the script at some point. It's like, yeah, her, her actual name is pronounced differently. But uh, Mia is just the easy... No, nobody really had names in this movie, to be brutally honest. Doesn't really seem like anybody really had a name in here. So, we ultimately have to where, uh, to where Martin is going to find where Mia had went to. And so, ultimately... Martin desperately wants to save Mia. She's, he sees the value in her, and then also, like, he actually has a real fondness for her. And basically, like, when are you going to get another attractive woman that looks like that <laughs> in this kind of world? Like, hey, there's some value in that woman. So he, of course, is not thinking and just running out there looking for her, and he ends up running into a bullet for his trouble. Not a bullet that is going to kill him, but pretty dang close. So, because he ends up kind of running out there and is just kind of slowly kind of like sifting through trying to find out where she is. And that is when he gets a shot in the chest for his trouble. Because ultimately he is without, without bullets. Because ultimately he checks the shotgun and realizes that there are no shells in there. He checks pockets and he's like oh my god did they take my did they take my shells were they gonna were they gonna like were they gonna try and were they gonna try to to kill me because Catherine ultimately was consistently like holding her shovel up for a very bizarre amount of extended of time but then eventually when Martin talks about hey where's mia then all of a sudden she like stops picking up her shovel and then otherwise decides okay mia is the real true issue here so we have it to where martin brings a knife to a gunfight but reasonably it ends up that it works in this scenario to where the man that ultimately is holding uh, Mia kid kidnapped, kidnapped, ultimately gets stabbed for his trouble and ultimately dies. And so reasonably, he ends up finding Mia and consoling her and saying, like, hey, everything's going to be all right. To where Mia now is just like, this man... <laughs> This man is the man that found me, even though um, Catherine was looking for her. Like, ultimately, Mia is like, this is the man that found me. He is the man that found me and, and saved me. And so that's all that really matters to Mia. And at some point, Mia is starting to realize that she is slowly but surely becoming pregnant of course so because reasonably i don't think they have quite nearly protection in the uh otherwise whatever this apocalypse is so we have to wear like bun in the oven mia is now assessing that okay i'm gonna have i'm gonna have a child and so now like uh Catherine's even pushing more that it's like hey we need to take him out uh we need to take Martin out it's going to be an extra food to feed or or uh, food to feed face to feed during uh 
during uh during now we like we don't have as many like resources like we only have just enough food for two we don't have enough for three so <laughs> martin's gonna go martin's gonna have to go ultimately catherine is pushing like how about you like how about you shave him and mia goes it's like well how about I kind of uh, put together um, some food and poison him? Do it that way. And, but Catherine's like, well, that'll take days. So, because reasonably what happens is that Martin ends up saving their lives. <laughs> or ends up saving Maya's life. And so Maya in turn ends up Nursing, uh, nursing Martin's injury, but when also looking at it, they are starting to realize how much of a value Martin is to to them, and vice versa. Of my Maya saying that he protected her, he saved her, and so. Ultimately, we have to Martin is starting to feel that gunshot wound and he is starting to get sick. He is starting to get an infection. He's using maggots to try to uh, siphon off the infection, but he's getting sick. So ultimately, the girls decide, OK, like if we're going to do this, we're going to fully fledgedly like do this. Like we have to really say now that we're going to keep this guy alive. So they basically, they, they share a bed with him and ultimately they try to keep him warm in a very unconventional like way, let's just say. So they keep him warm. They ultimately keep him alive and justifiably Martin no longer is really just holding a gun to them anymore. Um, Really, yeah, he stowed him away in another room, but that was only because he couldn't trust them. Now, when it seems like his life is in the balance, it's like, okay, I think I can, like, I can have my gun not pointed at you 24-7 because ultimately you're probably just going to kill me in my sleep anyways. So it really just gets to the point to where they eventually start to, like, Maya is definitely just thinking, like, well, like, Martin is too valuable to me. Like, my my kid needs a father. And so it gets to the point to where in this movie, Catherine ends up starting to get really sick. And so eventually... Martin is kind of looking around and he's like, oh my God, did like, did Maya poison us? Like, did she poison us to, to get the food all for herself? And Catherine says, no, she just poisoned me. Ultimately going, oh my God, blood had turned on, <laughs> blood had turned on like family had turned on one another. And plus, like, I guess Catherine, since she was older, it's like, sorry, but, like, we only have food for two. And, like, I like I need a strong man to protect me. So, uh, I guess uh, the last vote of Survivor, turn out the, turn out the candle and that and this and that and what have you, whatever and what have you. So... It ends up that Catherine is getting poisoned and so reasonably she goes with Martin to figure out a way to take her out so that way she wouldn't suffer and Martin will easily go and go with this because ultimately he's like yeah I don't want you to suffer it's like this sucks that this happened and, and this and that so not in that way, but ultimately in his dead silence. It's just kind of like, yeah, I'll, I'll do whatever you ask. So at first, he is almost going to use the, the, the shotgun on her, but she's like, no, save your bullets. 
like uh, we got to do this another way so cuz reasonably at some point they are star starting to slowly but truly see that there are people like groups that are trying to scavenge around and try to find resources and stuff like that and so eventually uh we have Martin that is kind of in the middle of the night kind of walking around like uh finding out that there's a group of like a big group of people that are kind of searching around and like Mia and Catherine were at some points thinking it's like well we only have a certain number of bullets and like there's not going to be enough bullets to take down a group of people but Maya comes to the conclusion it's like well there's enough bullets to take out all of us like recently if you don't want to die brutal and and tortured and and all this and that probably to be made to be a, a a man sandwich i don't know but so reasonably within this movie Catherine ends up getting uh ends up getting killed ends up getting like uh murdered because ultimately like easier to die that way and so what ends up happening is that a group ends up stumbling onto Martin's camp anyways and so it ends up that Maya and Martin are ending up running through the running through the forest because reasonably their like their camp is moot to try to try to save that so ultimately we have it to where Martin does use uh does use the basically all of his all of his resources on these men he ultimately uses all of his bullets on everyone and so it ends up that there is nothing left for them to do so basically what martin ends up uh doing a sacrifice play told me tell maya run so what he does is Maya is running and Martin is blowing on a harmonica basically to get all of these guys to come to him. Ultimately saying, Maya, I'm going to give you a shot and I'm going to wait here to take any number of people that I can take down. But like, hey, uh, whatever happens to me is whatever happens, like save my child. So we have it to where... Martin ends up just ending up getting like slayed by these guys and otherwise just brutally ends up co of course getting like chopped up into pieces and stuff like that and killed brutally this and that ultimately queuing uh Mia ending up running uh to eventually just kind of uh, like running to no ends to eventually finding some oasis some kind of camp where ultimately she is uh seemingly going to eventually get to a some alliance some community and be okay with this all ultimately the woman is asking her like ultimately asking her it's like well hey like how far along are you do you have a name yet um and at one point, here's the thing. We taper off at this one last story. So ultimately, we have that question of whatever happened to the survivalist brother. Ultimately, that story comes up in this. To ultimately, we find out that Martin's brother had done some foolish and or stupid things and that ended up costing him his life. And so reasonably that drove Martin's character to even much more so go into seclusion and ultimately realizing that Martin could have been a person to be with this with these group of guys but he chose not to, uh, knowing full well that 
it would cost his brother his life. So ultimately, he decided to just uh, go into his own seclusion. So, because his brother, ultimately, when Maya asks him, like, how did your brother die? He just mentions that at first, he was careless. But then later on in the movie, he goes on to tell Maya exactly how he had died. And that ultimately he had died in the hands of, of seemingly a, a seemingly with a group of men. So, yeah. Kind of interesting aspect of movie. Ultimately, again, might be a little bit slow paced for a lot of people. But speaking of pace, I'm going to get out of here. Because ultimately, this is only an hour and a half review, luckily for me. Uh, so I'm going to get out of here. I enjoyed this movie, and I hope a lot of people eventually will see this at some point or ultimately realize that, yeah, I didn't like this movie, and I'll probably apologize to the heavens, but uh, I liked it. I liked it because it's a different film. I like it also because of its uh, very much adult-like approach to things. Um, really knowing, like, if you have nothing else to offer, then offer up your skin! <laughs> basically in the end so i'm gonna get out of here goodbye everybody goodbye everybody